This is a shotgun tier list that uses data recorded over the course of a bunch of consecutively taken shots, uh, recording the rates of which the shotguns did not give me a one shot versus a whiff versus a low damage shot somewhere between 100 and 125 hit points. This video was sponsored by Crossout. Crossout is an online vehicle shooter game where you can Mad Max your very own combat car creations that make the Toyota Hilux jealous. Free to play on PC and current and last gen PlayStation and Xbox derivatives, just download and play. You get total freedom with making your vehicles with an almost infinite amount of combinations. Choose the wheels, cabins, guns, chainsaws, power drills, and other OSHA violations at your choosing. The game is easy to get into and you can make a new vehicle in no time flat with the game's editor. You can go from a test drive to a real fight really quickly. Something for everybody's on display here with fast paced PVP games, PVE raids, and special seasonal modes, battle royales, and more. You can also play the game's own narrative driven open world campaign or with somebody. I personally think if you like other vehicle combat games, you'll be impressed by the damage models where you can shoot individual parts off of the enemy and break them apart in real time. There's an in-depth progression system with a lot of different factions offering their own play styles, so tons of content. If you want to pick your brain and get creative with any combination of Mad Max machines, I think you'll enjoy the customizability of Crossout. Check out the game for free by using my link in the description. There's a free bonus for those who do, with a choice of unique pixel paint, free weapons, and a powerful vehicle cabin. Thanks again to Crossout for sponsoring this video. These tests are conducted with a laser sight while ADS'd because both of those increase the choke. Choke being gun nerd term for tightening up a shotgun spread. Here's proof. All right, that's the average of 30 ADS laser sight shots with the M590 from five meters. Now we'll take the laser sight off and see what happens. Same distance. As you can see, especially from far away, the unlaser sight grouping is a lot wider spread. And this discrepancy gets more noticeable the further you go away. Here are 30 shots from 8 meters. And now I'm gonna shoot this same group without a laser sight. Well, look at that. So yeah, lasers make a really, really big difference on shotguns. And I think there's arguments to be made for and against them. The big thing here is if you're gonna be holding like a close angle, right? You don't want the laser sight to be sticking out uh, away from the angle towards the bad guy so that they can see it. So you just got to be really mindful of the placement of it. And even then, I mean, there's plenty of situations where it probably really doesn't matter. I mean, just having that one shot ability around a tight angle is really powerful. The average fragging distance in Rainbow Six Siege is about eight meters. That's kind of the distance of a passenger bus. We can take each of the shotguns, fire a bunch of groups at them, at this target dummy, and then we can compare the one shot failure rate to one another to get an idea of how consistent the damage output is. Because if it's gonna work from here, it'll work from here. And that's what you want. All right, so the coveted M590, mute, smoke, very popular. How many times did it whiff from eight meters? Okay, that's 119 damage. That's not a lot. That's low damage. Anything lower than 125, I'm considering low damage because it's not gonna one shot a three armor. That's a whiff. Low damage. Whiff. Low damage. Whiff. Okay. The M590 only gave me three whiffs and three low damage shots from this distance, so that's a 10% failure rate. If you gotta do what you gotta do, I would say the M590 is most of the time reliable, right? I'm not gonna tell you to bring up the SMG11. That is more guaranteed. But the fact that it does so well at this range tells me that everything from here in between eight meters, this is pretty nice to have. And that's the point of the test, right? Remember, we're not moving this out to eight meters and saying, hey, engage at eight meters with a shotgun. That's not what I'm telling you to do. I'm just saying that the damage profile is good, statistically speaking, okay? With very reliable damage output from the ranges it needs to be, it's nothing too crazy, so I'll give it an A tier rating. All right, SGCQB. And we'll go out to eight meters and this thing, has pretty decent long range potency, and you're about to see why. The SGCQB gave me just as many whiffs as the M590, but strangely enough, it didn't give me as many low damage shots at all. It only gave me one. Low damage. Whiff. Whiff. Last two. Whiff. So, with the SG, we had one low damage shot and we had three whiffs, which is still less, right? That's still a 1% one shot failure rate. The French pump shoddy 
pretty decent at eight meters, a lot like the M590. With very comparable numbers to the M590 with nothing to make it particularly stand out, I put it at A tier as well. But I think the damage differential there is indicative of something, right? I think, I think it is. So it does more reliably uh, put out damage, but it does have that random deviation spread that the M590 has, like all shotguns have. ITA-12. This thing is, uh, this thing is a piece of work, I'll tell you what, and you're about to find out why. Time for a coffee. Here we go. Low damage. Also, it has an eight-round mag. This gun sucks. Whiff. 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 So we're already at three whiffs, and we've only fired eight shots. Now, it could be a statistical anomaly, right? It could be bad luck, but that's why we're doing multiple shots. Whiff. Getting a one shot with the ITA-12 is almost like a coin flip. It has a 40% failure rate, not to mention a tendency to throw in a low damage shot or two. Whiff. Whiff. Low damage. Whiff. Whiff. Low damage. Okay. So, are you starting to understand? <laughs> so, uh, without saying much else, the ITA-12L stinks. 12 out of 30 whiffs. 12 out of 30, that is almost a 50% failure rate at 8 meters, with a laser sight, by the way. So 40% failure rate, that's already hugely significant compared to the M590 and the SG. And it has low damage shots, too. So 3 low damage, and 12 whiffs. I am not a fan of this shotgun, I'll tell you what. The only thing keeping me from putting the ITA-12 in the worst tier possible is the fact that there are crappier semi-auto shotguns. Then we went to the M870. Here we go. The M870 had the best numbers out of the pump shotguns, with two whiffs and three low damage shots. When you factor in the fact that the cycling rate is pretty quick, you have a case low statistically for the best pump shotgun, low considering damage. this thing doesn't have any drawbacks compared to its competition, okay. like right. a low magazine or something like that. So, good numbers for the M870 though. So only two whiffs, that's quite literally a 0.67%, less than a percentage failure rate. But three low damage shots, so is that going to screw you over? Not as much, since you're, since this shotgun is only available for defenders. Um, I would say that if you're running an attacker, you're going to run into a lot of Doc and Rook. So, uh, getting a low damage shot with the M870 might not be too great. But the caveat, right, is that the fire rate... The cycling rate is pretty quick. The M870 sits comfortably at S tier. Alright, the Supernova... This thing gets a laser sight that is literally blocked by the <laughs> suppressor, but that's funny. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's give it a whirl. That's a good start. Whiff. So while the Supernova did whiff. give me seven whiffs, it didn't give me a low damage shot. It didn't give me anything between 100 and 125. I wonder what's going on with the spread and the damage output there, but whiff. it is interesting. Ouch. Ugh, that's... oof. Okay, so... Hey, seven. Seven whiffs. Still not as bad as the ITA-12. So 23% failure rate. Here's the interesting thing. No low damage shots. So I think the individual pellets of the supernova are a little bit higher damaging because every time they connect, right, assuming that they don't go wide, you get a one shot. Uh, however, the, the, the actual deviation of the pellets seems to be a bit more varied than the M590 SG, its contemporaries, right? Because of the fact that it will deviate at 8 meters more wildly. Uh, still, I don't think that's terrible. And again, if we're playing up close, like we should be, uh, anything within 8 meters, that's not a bad figure to have, right? Especially, you get the suppressor, which is kind of a cool little thing. I don't know. You know, if you're into that. So in my opinion, the Supernova is middle of the pack. Not as good as the M590 or the SG, but it's still serviceable. So now instead, with the semi-autos, instead of recording the amount of times it doesn't give me the one-shot, I'm going to record the amount of times it does one-shot. How many times I won't need that follow-up shot at all, right? And that'll be a good indicator of the spread and the damage output of that particular gun and how you might get a little bit lucky. Because if you're getting lucky from 8 meters, you're going to get a little bit more lucky from 6, 5, and so on, right? The M1014 only gave one me shot. 4 one-shots and 8 yeah, low-damage shots. So, rely on a second shot more than often with this weapon. It's not particularly crazy damage output, and you're going to see, compared to the other semi-autos, it's not a lot to talk about. Okay. So this is interesting, right? So, we only got a one-shot 4 out of 30 times, but... 8 out of the 30 times, we got a low damage shot in between 100 and 125. 
that might take down most low armor targets that you run into, but uh, you would be able to get a reliable second shot for the most part with the M1014, right? It works with pulse because of the scanner and the verticality, but otherwise it's pretty mid. So let's compare that to Spaz 12. One shot, one shot, low damage, one shot, one shot, one shot. Look at that. So we already are on a roll. The Spaz 12 is obviously more reliable right away. See, see how significant that is? I'm already, I'm already getting a huge difference at the same distance just because I'm using a different weapon, right? The Spaz had a 70% one-shot rate. Just to put that in comparison, the ITA-12 performs worse with one-shots than the Spaz. Plus, only five low-damage shots. Get that two in there for the 30. One, two. Yeah, like, man. So comparably, <laughs> let me count. So 21, 21 out of 30, right? 70%. So on a semi-auto, that kind of rate is very, very good. Okay? That's very solid. The Spaz 12 easily goes in A tier alongside the M590 and the SGCQB. You understand why math is important now, guys? Let's go to the Sniper 90. Can we call it that now? Let's find out if we should keep calling it the Sniper 90. Let's find out. Eight meters. Here we go. One shot. Statistically, the Super 90 and the Spaz 12 performed almost identically. The Super 90 has one more shell in its magazine for what it's worth. One shot. Low. Well, if we look at the 20 out of 30, our Sniper 90, 66.7% one shots. Six out of 30 low damage shots. So, you know, not uh, pretty, almost identical to the Spaz 12. Uh, if I'm being a hundo, if I'm being a hundred percent. Um. Yeah, so pretty solid, honestly, for a semi-auto, and I can't really complain too much. In fact, if I think... I'm, does it have a different capacity? It has one more shell. So that might be something to take over the Spaz. The Super 90 is a solid semi-auto, especially when you pair it up with the Malusi Wubs. Let's clear up a little rumor here, right? Does the Spaz 15 have uh, identical stats to the Spaz 12, right? But instead, it's a box mag. Is that true? 30 damage? 35 curious here now. The Spaz 15 is ridiculous. I'm not even going to talk too much over these clips. I'm just going to show you a bunch of these freaking one shots. Remember, this is out of 30. One shot. One shot. Set two. One shot. Uh, damn. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're on a fucking roll. That's our first low damage shot at all. Yeah. One shot. That's a whiff. Low. Set five. One shot. Low damage. Okay, uh, Spaz 15. 80% one shots with the Spaz 15. Four low shot shots, and then only two of them failed to go below 100. And only two of them failed to go above 100 out of that 30 shot test. So we might have an S tier semi auto here. Not to mention it's really easy to control as well. Not only does the Spaz 15 have more reliable damage output than the Supernova, it also has a magazine that you can reload right away with a box. So yeah, this thing is easily S tier. We go to the sausage, the humble sausage, eight meters. The SAS D12 didn't really blow me away. It gave me five one-shots, but it's not supposed to. You're supposed to spam this thing at close range and click a whole bunch. Comparably to some other guns like it, you'll see that it's actually not too bad, but nothing that really stood out. Okay, so with the with the SAS G, right? Five out of 30 of those were one-shots. Eight out of 30 of those were low damage, so that's almost identical to the M1014. So I might have sounded optimistic and then changed my mind. Uh, at the end of the test. But I think what makes it different, right, is the fact that you can spam it, right? Faster fire rate than the M1014. So the idea behind this is, you know, it's probably better in like really, really close range, like go around a corner like that. The fire rate keeps the SAS G from being awful. I put it in the same tier as the Supernova. Okay, now we're on the FO12. This thing got nerfed really bad. Uh, we're about to see how bad. The FO12 did not give me a single one shot. Not one, zero. 
There are basically no redeeming qualities to this gun. It has rate of fire, and that's it. And even then, it has way too much recoil for you to control reliably. It's just not fun. Wow. <laughs> okay, um, Ella FO12. Zero on shots. Zero percent. So that is worse than the M1014. That is worse than the S uh, SASG12. Five low damage. Um, yeah, so I guess... I guess fire rate is supposed to be the calling card here, but compared to, like, it's not that much different. And the SASG has the same capacity. That's bad. That's really bad. Like, you pretty much have to be in... Like, you pretty much gotta be in dick slapping range for this thing to work. The worst primary shotgun in the game by far. Why does Yubi keep screwing over Ella? Please give her something. All right, and I almost forgot about the 612, so let's get these tests done. Low. The 612 has very similar damage output Kay. compared to the <laughs> M1014, oh, dear. with a smaller magazine that you can uh, reload more quickly since it's in a geez. big drum or cylinder, whatever you want to call it. Um, not particularly amazing, and I put it in the same category as the M1014. So that's my full shotgun tier list. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about some statistics for weapons in Siege, and I'll see you guys in the next video on Friday. Deuces.